Hello and a big welcome to Sound Sensations, the show with Nia and Peter. We're taking a break from our day jobs at Medell to host a special show. It's going to be a big celebration of all things music and hearing implants. Yes, we've got a packed show. There's an interview with one of the world's leading hearing implant surgeons, uh, videos from all over the world and three fantastic guests here in our brand new studio. What if we start with some music? That's a great idea. So, well, this first performance comes from Mayor Tom, a Spanish musician. Yes, he wanted some performers to join his latest music video. So we ran a little competition where hearing implant users sent in videos of themselves singing, dancing or playing their instruments. The winners were Ludmilla, a singer from Argentina, Paulina, a dancer from Colombia and Fabio from Spain, who plays the piano. Congratulations. Very cool, guys. Check them out in the new music video for Mayor Tom's song Tu Barrera del Sonido, which means your sound barrier. It's a new version of the song that Mayor Tom wrote a few years ago for his daughter. She has hearing loss, but thanks to her cochlear implant, she can enjoy her dad's music. Let's go check it out. Golpear la puerta y que me abras. 
what a way to kick things off. I love how that song starts quiet and builds momentum. I totally agree. What do you think, Rami? Would you like to have him in your band? Absolutely. So Paulina, Ludmilla and Fabio won a competition to take part in that music video, but it certainly wasn't the first competition for hearing implant users. No, one of the longest running ones is Beats of Cochlea in Poland. Of course, and the man behind it is famous ENT surgeon Professor Henrik Skazinski. Well, he's behind a lot of things actually. He runs the World Hearing Centre and has been performing hearing implant surgeries for more than 30 years now. And he's even been getting involved in the film industry, I heard. Uh, that's right. But why not ask the man himself about his work with music and hearing implants? Somehow he managed to find some time to talk to us about it. Hello and good evening. Professor Skarzynski, in 2022, the eighth edition of the Beats of Cochlea Music Festival took place. To the people in our audience who might not know about it yet, what is Beats of Cochlea? Festival. The International Music Festival for Children, Youths and Adults with Hearing Disorders, Beats of Cochlea, is an occasion to present the extraordinary achievements of modern science and medicine. Users of all sorts of hearing implants show off their musical abilities. They present both their communication skills and their musical ones. They perform as singers, as musicians playing all sorts of instruments, and as composers. When we look at our patients, it's crucial to see more than just a person who we help to communicate with their environment. From the beginning, we wanted the festival to showcase the success of many hearing implant recipients, so they could become ambassadors of modern science and medicine stały się ambasadorami współczesnej nauki i medycyny w tym zakresie. Dzięki nim Thanks to these people, we can show the potential effects of rehabilitation. The festival participants are extraordinary. They are often professionals in various music genres or music enthusiasts. Działalności kulturalnej albo pasjonaci. We need both of them because they support our activities and strengthen the positive image of all of us. And how did it come about that you initiated a full-length cinema movie about a man that regains his love for music through a CI? Probably more than one person came up with this idea, and indeed I was not the only one. The idea had come up in the past because of many talented people. We wanted to show their skills. We wanted to show them to the world so they could raise awareness to potential candidates through their music. The Sonata movie shows the story of one of our patients from his point of view. Z, z taką osobą, z jej punktu widzenia oraz co się dzieje w jej otoczeniu. And could you please now tell us uh, a little bit about the plot of the movie in a nutshell? Fabuła filma odnosi się do tego, co przeżywał Grzegorz. The plot of the movie looks at what Grzegorz was experiencing and the problems he encountered. It shows the experience of people who helped him in the diagnostic and rehabilitation process and helped him in developing his communication skills sprawiania, żeby jego komunikacja z otoczeniem była coraz lepsza. The breakthrough moment for Gregorz was an operation and the new possibilities that it opened for him. He took advantage of these new opportunities brilliantly. Gregorz can freely communicate within his surroundings, finish music school and follow a profession, continue his career and follow his passion do kontynuacji swojej kariery, jak i swoich pasji. And I have to ask, how does it feel to be portrayed by famous Polish actor Jerzy Stur, who appeared, for instance, in Nani Moretti's famous movie Habemus Papan from 2011? Do you recognize yourself in that representation? I have been asked frequently if Jerzy Stur played my character well or not. I always answer that we gained one more surgeon, Professor Jerzy Stor. So when did the film premiere and how has the reception been so far? 
The film first premiered last year at a festival and it was released in cinemas this year. The film has aroused great interest. It received prizes at various festivals. It was awarded a special audience award. The film was warmly welcomed by disabled communities. Gregorz's various issues and the numerous barriers he overcame in the end give hope and chances for others, not only people with hearing loss, but also other people with disabilities. So in your opinion, do you think that the movie has the potential to raise awareness of the barriers and the treatment options for profound hearing loss, or do you consider it mainly a cinematic experience? The film addresses the deep-rooted issues faced by the main protagonist and his family. The film shows the challenge of overcoming a whole bunch of problems. The film shows the gradual overcoming of what seemed impossible to achieve. The film shows that applied therapy, treatment and modern technologies like hearing preservation in partial deafness are not only a media or cultural occurrence. It shows, most importantly, the scientific and medical breakthrough through modern communication means and popularizes achievements and problems of the disabled among various communities. At the same time, we see that many obstacles in life can be removed and that we can help almost everyone. And what role does music play in your personal life? Do you make music yourself? Music is essential to everyone's life. It is important for me and I enjoy it. Although I was not always able to fulfill my dreams in this area. In my high school years, when I made my own electric guitar, I did not manage to create a music band. In my student times, when I actively worked in a student's music club, Medic, we organized numerous cultural events, including festivals, student song reviews, and other musical gatherings. In my everyday clinical work, we use music to support various groups of patients, tinnitus patients, hearing aid users, and hearing implant users. Thank you so much for your time, Professor Skarzynski. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you and greetings to Innsbruck. And now let's end by taking a look at the trailer of the movie. Tu wyłączasz, tu przewijasz, o, przód. Sonata. Chcesz się nauczyć grać sonatę? A jest szkoła dla głuchych i niedosłyszących, niech pani tam z nim pojedzie. Odesłali nas tutaj. Nie będziesz się uczył w naszej szkole. Kurewski system! Ja nie mam czasu, tracić czas! Ja nie mam czasu! Wy wierzycie w to, że on będzie grał. Ja pierdolę. Wierzymy w to, że ktoś go może nauczyć. To jest... Dzisiaj. Brawo. Świetnie. Dzisiaj jak Moim 
zdaniem w jego przypadku powinno się oceniać serce. Ważna jest logika. Ja się mówi muzyka! Jak już się jej nauczysz, to dasz mi znać, dobrze? Haj, wiesz co? Miej ich w dupie. Bardzo ładnie. Kobiety nie mają. No, mają wszyscy. Kasia ma pęś? Ma. Po co mu pęś? Bo Bóg tak chciał. And if you want to see Gregors, who the film is about playing the piano in concert, then you should watch Sound Sensation, the grand finale. That is good to know. So what have we got next? Here's a clue. A crocodile? A smiling crocodile. Huh? Okay, I see. Let's get somebody in who can explain it all to you. Please welcome Dagmar Hermanova. When you're smiling, when you're smiling, the whole world smiles for you. So, thank you very much. Thank you for making your trip here and joining us in the studio. It's great having you and thank you for making the time. Um, I would like to interview a little bit about your project, The Smiling Crocodile, and how did it come to the name Smiling Cro Crocodile and what is it all about? Okay, this crocodile is called Smiley and it's a mascot of the charity called Smiling Crocodile. And uh, the name came out uh, about 15 years ago when I set up the charity. And, uh, you know, all the charities are about, you know, everybody wants to have a hope or is in need. But uh, we wanted to have it something which is positive and uh, which everybody would remember. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why everybody's asking me actually the same question. Why Smiling Crocodile is called Smiling Crocodile? But this is for it. And also the crocodile is a cool animal. It's a brave animal. Right, and a, a, a crocodile has a power, so it can fight for these children in developing countries to get hearing back. Great. No, but I can see the name is very fitting for it, and it's a very cute mascot you have there. Thank you. So, regarding the charity project, what were some of the um, smiling crocodiles' highlights in the past years? Okay, we have two main projects so far. One is in Czech Republic. And there we have a big center for children with severe complex needs, or for children with severe complex needs. And uh, the, there are that severe cases that they would need, or they are already needing, the palliative care as well. So we have currently the kindergarten and elementary school, but we are aiming to have uh, the children hospice in the uh, next couple of years, and also respite care. So this is Prague, Czech Republic, and uh, abroad. We are supporting thousands of children with hearing impairment or complex needs uh, from emerging markets, developing countries, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Nepal, English-speaking Africa, India, a lot. And uh, there, um, the project is about uh, um, the awareness, that's one thing, but also we are supporting the rehabilitation, education, and integration of these children uh, to the mainstream society. That sounds great and it sounds like very far-reaching as well, stunning. Um, but I also believe that uh, music played a big role in this project somehow? Music is a big thing for hearing impaired people. Everybody knows it, or not, not maybe everybody, but that's we are here and the music is the part of everybody's life and also for hearing impaired it's important. And uh, yes, uh, uh, during the therapies abroad in developing countries mainly, we do a lot of music sessions. But it's not enough, you know, and uh, when we were thinking about awareness uh, four years ago, uh, the music is a great connection and everybody likes music and it's rememberable. So we have created uh, the campaign, which is called Because I Hear I Live. And uh, the major thing of this campaign is, uh, is the song, which uh, now I would say it could be named as a, a anthem for the cochlear implant users in developing countries. And uh, we've recorded the song with a professional singer from Czech Republic, Milan Peroutka, and uh, 
the children or the main people, main musicians from developing countries uh, in 12 different countries in 10 languages. And uh, yeah, and uh, this music is just going on. The, the songs were number of times used uh, in the media or do, during the concerts, during different shows, and it helps the children to get the awareness and get the influence. That is amazing. So maybe we should have a little sneak peek into the, the video of the song. Sweet child, nice smile that is Born to quiet words at the different That's a nice song actually, that's great. So you're also singing in the video? No, unfortunately not. I can sing well, but only in my shower. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's nice. Um, just wanted to come back to Smiling Crocodile. So what's the connection between Medell and Smiling Crocodile? Uh, we are so grateful that Medell is supporting the international projects in developing countries intensively since 2011, actually. And not just Medell, but also Dr. Hochmeyer personally. And uh, because of Medell, a lot of projects could be done and a lot of children could be helped in a way that uh, they could 
receive their rehabilitation and education. If, if they are, for example, living in slums or, uh, or they are orphans, they would never be able to get any rehab without uh, medal support, medal kind support. And Oh, that sounds lovely. Great. Um, just regarding the charity project that you're running in India, mm -hmm. um, what's, what are you raising money for? Okay, in India, as I said, we support the rehabilitation and education of the children which are living in disadvantaged areas. And you know, uh, one part is that they get the rehabilitation in the center, but India is a huge country and these children living in the slums are living sometimes hundreds of kilometers away from the centers and from the therapies. So they need some transport. And uh, we are fundraising also for the transport for these children. And uh, they used to pay to do tuk tuk service, taxi service in India, but we came uh, we came to the idea to have our own tuk tuks, smiling crocodile tuk tuks, which would be regularly transporting the children from the slums uh, to the centers. So currently, uh, we would be happy if anybody would help us to fundraise for the smiling crocodile charity tuk tuks, specifically for this transport of the children. I understand. And so how, if people would like to contribute or donate something, how would they be able to donate towards your tuk-tuks? They can definitely go to our website, www.smilingcrocodile.org, and uh, uh, they can push the button donate mm. and donate whatever they want to. Yes, and uh, thanks very much for anybody's help. So are there any more questions for me there, huh? There are not on here, but there would always be, of course. Uh, but I would just like to say thank you so much again for coming, for joining us here. It's amazing work that you're doing, and I hope that I'll see you again very, very soon. Thank you, Dasha. Thank you very much for having me over. And thanks oh. to everyone which is, uh, which is supporting us and which is willing to donate to Smiling Crocodile Children. Goodbye. Wow, really loving the energy of our band today. Actually, now would be a good time to introduce them. Yes, that's a good point. Okay, so like us, they work at Medell headquarters. We've got research manager Rami on vocals and keyboard. Technical writer Marina on vocals and the acoustic guitar. Anikata, who manages ENT relations on bass and software technician Jacob on the drums. And I must say, they sounded very in tune. Yes, maybe they got Markus Seutl involved. Who? Markus Seutl. He tunes and repairs organs for a living. Not that kind of organ, but real church organs in Europe, Asia and even Australia which is especially impressive as he had autosclerosis and uses a bone bridge bone conduction implant to hear. Let's go check it out. Guten Tag, also mein Name ist Markus Teutel. Ich bin ursprünglich aus Österreich, lebe seit elf Jahren in Deutschland und bin von Berufswegen Orgelintonateur. Das heißt, ich bin verantwortlich für den Klang einer Orgel. So wie die Orgel klingt, das ist meine Aufgabe, die so zum Klingen zu bringen, in diesem Stil auch, wie sie auch immer ist. Aber ich intoniere die Orgel und ich stimme sie. Ja, und vor dreieinhalb Jahren, ich war mitten in einem Projekt, ist am eines Morgens einfach am linken Ohr ein Wattegefühl gewesen. Ich dachte, es sei ein bisschen Schmutz drin. Und mit mehreren Untersuchungen und Tests wurde dann Otosklerose diagnostiziert. Das heißt, meine Gehörknöchelchen können den Schall nicht mehr ins Innenohr in normalen Erfolg, sage ich mal, weiter transportieren. Haben wir natürlich anfangs große Sorgen gemacht, ein bisschen auch mit meinem Schicksal gehadert, was vielleicht jeder tun würde, da ich auch sehr an meinem Beruf hänge und ich das mit fast 30 Jahren jetzt schon mit Herzblut mache, aber meine Ärzte und auch die Techniker der Firma Medel haben mich von Anfang an eigentlich großen, großen Mut gemacht, 
Und somit habe ich mich natürlich für das Implantat entschieden und äh, wurde dann im November 2018 mit dem Implantat versorgt. Und das war natürlich ein unglaublicher Moment, weil ich wirklich alles hören konnte. <lacht> das war schon äh, sehr beeindruckend. Natürlich bekommt mein Gehirn zwei verschiedene Informationen vom rechten guten Ohr und vom implantierten Ohr. Und das dauerte auch eine gewisse Zeit, bis das, das ganz normal wieder läuft. Aber mittlerweile ist das alles kein Problem mehr. Für diese ganzen Feineinstellungen sind die lieben Kollegen von MedEl schon in Halle im Dom bei mir gewesen. Nachdem ich das Implantat da drei Monate aktiviert hatte und da haben sie so große Veränderungen vorgenommen, dass wirklich das Hörerlebnis für mich deutlich nochmal verbessert wurde. Also auch nicht nur das Hörerlebnis, sondern auch das natürlich ähm, zum Abhören, für, zum Hören feinster Nuancen am Orgelklang von leisen Klängen bis zu sehr lauten Klängen. Und seit diesem Zeitpunkt arbeite ich wirklich ganz ähm, normal wie früher an meinem Beruf. It's amazing that he can carry on with his work even after hearing loss. Yes, just like Beethoven. He also used bone conduction when his hearing got worse. Of course, that technology was quite different to an implant. Basically just a wooden stick between his teeth. Still, Beethoven managed to compose true masterpieces. One of them was Ode to Joy, which leads us to our next video. Yes, this is a choir workshop for hearing implant recipients held right here in Austria. Let's take a look. Und es gibt auch die Zehenspitzen, wenn es geht. Und die Äpfelgreifen, die da ganz oben sind. Und wenn sie uns. Das Wichtigste, finde ich, an den Ganzen ist sehr viel Üben und dazu gehört die Musik. Die Musik ist eine der wichtigsten Therapieformen in der CI-Geschichte. Astrid, ich komme aus der Schweiz, aus Luzern. Ich wurde auch dort im Luzerner Kantonsspital operiert. Und jetzt zu so meinem Musikerleben, jetzt mit dem Implantat. Also als Kind habe ich viel gesungen und musiziert. Und ich komme auch aus einer musikalischen Familie. Und dann, als mein Gehör abgenommen hat und ich Hörgeräte getragen, getragen habe, da war die Musik nicht mehr genüsslich. Also ich habe das ziemlich vermieden, Musik zu hören, weil ich viel Ruhe brauchte und es, es klang auch nicht mehr gut. Und dann mit dem Implantat, da zu Anfang war es auch ein bisschen schwierig mit der Musik, weil ähm, das, äh, das, das, all das Abgespeicherte, die Musikstücke, bis die einigermaßen wieder klangen, wie sie früher geklungen haben, ähm, das war dann schon so ein, ein Übergang, der nicht so einfach war. Aber mit der Zeit lernt man wieder Musik zu hören und das kommt automatisch, weil ich habe dann auch angefangen wieder viel Musik zu hören über Radio oder Konzerte 
Und dann war das wieder so ein Genuss und das ist dann immer so mehr gekommen, dass ich dann mich auch wieder der Musik gewidmet habe und ich habe begonnen zu singen. What a surprise! It looks like one of the choir members is here. Welcome, Mr. Heinz Kirchschlager. Hello. Hi, nice Hi. to meet you. Hi, good having you. Please take a seat. Thank you. So, Heinz, tell me, how was the workshop in St. Pilton? It was a great experience to sing, dance, and have a good time with 18 people of different countries. Also, we got a small final concert. Mm -hmm. It was lots of fun. And the new family has found it. The sea I singers. That sounds amazing. But I hear that you're not also a, not only a singer, you're also a musician, right? Actually I started playing folk music with the Sieg, it's like an accordion mm -hmm. quite late in life. I was forty eight years. But my hearing got worse and worse. By 2017, I was almost deaf on my right side. So I gave up my music making. But then you got your cochlear implant and that changed everything, right? I got my CI four years ago and ventured back to the Zirk a short time later. I soon realized it. The instrument is the best hearing training and therapy for me. Now, I own two new harmonicas and regularly I do performance with two friends. I've regained it back the joy of music. That's amazing. And now, of course, we would love to hear you play. Sure. Great. Ooh, the man came prepared. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, and Heinz, before we let you go, uh, we saw that you brought another instrument, a very unique, a very special one, one that you designed and crafted yourself. Wow, what is that? This is a cochlear shaped Alphorn. That's the, incredible. <laughs> the first worldwide, what I made, made with my friend, out of Brucewood. Beautiful. And how did you come to the idea to build this instrument? I knew I must have worked hard with my new CI. And I think I must do something crazy those along. It sounds perfect. Could we therefore hear a few notes? Of course. Great. <laughs> <laughs> and I have brought two more pieces. You can. Oh, did you? you can, can we? Yes. Oh, oh, that wow. would be amazing. Uh, I, me being the gentleman, I would say ladies first. Okay, Peter, it's game on. <laughs> Hold. Here we go. <laughs> <coughs> ladies first. Ladies first. Okay, thank you. I may be a little competitive, so <laughs> here we go. I want to do the high note, low note. <laughs> <laughs> 
Are you ready? Please do. <laughs> oh, there you go. I got multiple you got, notes. You got okay. both of them. Beat yeah. that. Okay, I have a go. For you. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> It sounds well more like we're calling an elk in the wild. Thank you, very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Heinz. Thank you for having you. Thank you for your inspiring story. It was awesome having you on the show. And I really hope that we're going to meet again very, very soon. Thank you for having me. Vielen Dank. Well, Heinz certainly showed us how it's done. Next stop, Eurovision. You joke, right? But one of our hearing implant users almost made it. Really? Uh, yes, one of our Bonebridge users wowed judges in Israel's Eurovision selection competition in 2019. And Medal also had a special role in Eurovision this year. Wow, really? Yes, indeed. We had an extra studio set up for people with hearing loss at the Song Contest in Italy with special assistive listening devices, subtitles and sign language to make it fully accessible. Roughly 80 people with hearing loss, hearing aids and hearing implants get to enjoy Europe's biggest music competition live in Turin. Okay then, in that case, let's check it out. Ma è stato bellissimo perché io non ho mai sentito la musica per 40 anni e stasera grazie alla tecnologia l'ho scoperta e mi sono emozionata tantissimo. Eh, il fatto di vivere assieme a persone che hanno il tuo stesso handicap o comunque che eh, come te si trovano certe volte a confrontarsi con delle difficoltà che sembrano insormontabili eh, aiuta da una parte a non sentirsi soli e dall'altra a trovare anche un po' l'ispirazione, la grinta nel tuo, nel tuo vivere quotidiano. Per la prima volta ci siamo sentiti inclusi ad ascoltare la musica, cosa che di solito i sordi con la musica proprio cioè, non sentendo un po'. Quindi è stata veramente un'esperienza bella. It's really amazing to see how far technology has come. It's easier than ever before for people with hearing implants to enjoy music. That's true. There's a constant progress in implant sound quality, streaming technology, and even in music training software. Our next guest is working on just that with a tool that has huge potential for hearing implant users. Welcome to one of the men behind the innovative Meludia app, Bastien Sanak. Around the world, around the Thank you for being with us here today. Thank you for having me. Okay, to, to start off, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about the Meludia app and what led you to develop it. Definitely. Um, so basically, many people think that we can't change our perception of music, of sound, even of the world. Um, and at Meludia, we believe that this perception can be changed. Okay, so we can change the way we react to sounds, the way we react to music. Um, and this can be done by the right triggers. And when it's being done, uh, it can trigger also some emotional breakthrough, uh, which are very good, like, for example, enjoying better to listen to music. Would it be fair then to say that it's almost training your mindset or retraining your mindset? There is definitely an aspect of it. Um, your relationship to sound needs to change, as well as developing some skills, developing some specific abilities, like, you know, micro skills that are going to combine together, create some bigger abilities for life. And in terms of the content of the app, um, how did you go about creating that? Well, my co-founder, uh, Vincent Chantrier, has been working for 25 years, accompanying more than 3,000 people from all musical levels, all ages, uh, and has developed a way um, to increase the musical potential 
but also the listening abilities of those people. So the idea was to create uh, some exercises in an interactive way to follow his patterns, to follow his method. Okay, so he was basically out in the field for many years. Yeah, it was okay. basically one of the biggest field research uh, possible yeah. uh, in, in different kinds of music with different kinds of people. That sounds fantastic. Okay, so um, in terms of the app itself, I mean, there are several apps out there, I'm sure you're aware. Um, what sets Meludia apart from a normal music app or a rehabilitation app? Mm. So, uh, an interesting thing about Vincent Chantrier is that he has some hearing impairments, he has some tinnitus himself. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah, he had an accident when he was 17 years old in a swimming pool, he fell on his ear, unfortunately, and he had a tympanoplasty. Mm -hmm. So he's always been very sensitive to what it means to be in the world uh, with a tinnitus or with hearing impairments, uh, what it is to have, um, to develop some things in your mind to uh, to get around uh, this condition and to be in the world with that. Okay. So what specific benefit can people with hearing implants um, or hearing implant users gain from using Meludia? Mm. So the, f the first thing is about music perception and music enjoyment itself. Our goal is that through the exercises that music appear as more enjoyable for them. Um, the second one is about you know, being exhausted at the end of the day because you've been listening and your brain has made so many efforts. So the idea is that through those very targeted listening exercises to develop some focus and attention and also to help the brain spend uh, less energy um, but with the things of everyday life. And, and the third one, which I think can be very important, what we have in music is interesting. In music, everybody can speak at the same time, in a, in a way, right? So you have different instruments playing different voices. Um, in Melodia, we have some exercises with, for example, two voices played at the same time and then playing the the, the high one again, or the low one again. And the idea is to be able for, like, your mind can actually separate, can discriminate different sounds played at the same time, which can be very helpful in noisy environments, like for example in a restaurant, when you have to focus on someone's voice or someone else's voice, and filter the other, the other voices around. That sounds actually like quite a uh, fun game and very useful for hearing implant users. We, we often have the conversation that being in a restaurant or a noisy environment, as you said, saps the energy sometimes or takes a lot of concentration. So yeah, that sounds actually quite fun, um, a fun game. In terms of um, using your app for education, is this something that could be used, for example, in a classroom with both hearing implanted children and people with normal hearing? Definitely, yeah. most definitely. We have um, lots of schools, music schools, but also general schools, mm -hmm. using um, Meludia uh, all around the world. And uh, what teachers say about that is that it develops a state of listening. Like, you know, creating this inner listening, creating some space inside to let something come, you know, and really listen to it. And it's not just about music, right? It's about having some more listening children in the world as well. Well, exactly, and that actually ties in very nicely to what um, Medell is about with overcoming hearing loss as a barrier to life. So we want to be out there enjoying all that life has to offer. Um, okay, so for all of our hearing implant users out there, could you let us know or let them know how they can locate the app? Where could they find it and download it? Definitely, so it would be through my Medell. Uh, and uh, we have implemented a way for users to go on Meludia and connect with their My Medal credentials in order to have a one year uh, unlimited access on Meludia. So I'm interested, have hearing implant users already used the app and have they enjoyed it? Oh yes. Yeah. Since 2017, um, we've, we were first contacted by uh, UCSF and the Dr. Charles Limp, mm -hmm. uh, who conducted a study with cochlear implant users. The feedback were very good and the results as well. Then we started working with Medel in 2018 with Johanna Boyer mm -hmm. uh, from Medel in America. And um, she did a study. She also helped us fine tune some exercises at Meludia so that they are completely compliant with cochlear implant users. And during the studies, she even proved um, that every cochlear implant user can actually start 
with Meludia, that the exercises, the first exercises are simple enough for them to start and to make progress onto the app. So um, the feedback was also amazing because they started to say that the, their world of music, their perception of music was changing as well. Um, so yeah, we are very excited with this new phase of making Meludia available to everyone in the world. That's fantastic. So the history with Medell and Meludia actually goes back quite some time. And so this is, this is the time now. We're ready. We're ready to go. It is. Well, Bastian, that's all we've got time for today. So I want to say thank you so much for coming in, explaining everything to us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Goodbye. <laughs> So don't miss that chance and get your free one-year Melodia license via MyMedal. Find everything you need to know down here. And with musical training, the sky is the limit. You can listen to music, sing, play an instrument, and some people with hearing implants even go beyond that and produce their own albums. One of them is jazz musician, bass player and composer Dizzy Yoshimoto from Japan. And another one is Roy Smith, an American banjo and guitar player with cochlear implants who recently released an album. Here's some clips behind the scenes. Actually, uh, let me just change my processor program. Okay, to mic forward, <clears throat> which I think gives me better control over my voice. The definition of cyborg is like part man, part machine, yeah. and, and I am one. So what does it feel like to be a cyborg, Roy? Feel any different? Can you run faster? No, no, I, but I can suffer more when a fire engine comes by. <laughs> I've realized that it's very important to me to be holding a guitar or a banjo and feeling it. For some reason, I mean, I, I can hear the pitch of instruments and the, the timber of instruments pretty well, but vocal pitch, my own vocal pitch, is a real challenge. So, this is, uh, this is where I'm pushing the limits of what's possible. <clears throat> Our Technicolor River Rolling down to the family farm It dazzled the eyes with its chemical dyes Flowing by with its heart When I got my first hearing aid and, and you know, began to sound just like noise, I put my instruments literally in the basement, put my aspirations in the closet. It dazzles the eyes with its chemical dyes Blowing by with its harlequin charm I expected it to suck, and it's good. It's really good. That was great! I loved it! And here it is, it's Mended Spirit. Yes, and if you want to see more world-class musicians with hearing implants performing on the big stage, make sure to watch Sound Sensation, the grand finale, live from Vienna in Austria. Along with the premiere of Virtual Voices and Band, an online band made up entirely of hearing implant users. That's all from us for now, though. A big thanks to all our guests, the studio team, and, of course, the Medell Band. And also a big thank you to you for watching. Have a great time and keep the music playing. So I say thank you for the music, the songs I'm singing.